the moon's hidden side and why we never see it, an ancient gravitational dance. It would be an astonishing coincidence if this happened by chance, but that's not the case. The Earth and Moon influence each other's rotations. The Moon is the reason our days are gradually getting longer, although it takes millions of years to notice a significant difference. Given Earth's much larger mass, it's not surprising that its effect on the Moon is much greater. This influence causes the length of the lunar day to align with the period of its orbit. If the Moon were rotating faster than it orbited Earth, it would be slowed down until the periods matched. Conversely, if it rotated more slowly, it would speed up. This phenomenon occurs because the Earth raises tides on the Moon, just as the Moon does on Earth. If the Moon had real oceans, instead of misnamed basalt plains, these tides would be enormous due to Earth's stronger gravity. However, even in bare rock, the force pulls the Moon out of shape, creating a bulge at the point facing Earth and another at the exact opposite point. After formation, Earth's gravity pulled more strongly on the Earth-facing bulge as the Moon turned, altering its rotation rate until it matched its orbital period. The rotation rate is still slowly changing to match the Moon's gradually increasing orbit. Are most Moons tidally locked? Most Moons experience forces that adjust their spin rates to match their orbital periods. The closer a Moon is to its planet, the stronger the gradient between the closest and furthest parts, increasing the pressure for the rotation rate to align. Therefore, a moon could avoid tidal locking only if it is an immense distance from its planet or if it were recently captured. Some of Jupiter and Saturn's outermost moons are thought to be recently captured asteroids, so they may not be tidally locked. However, all the well-known moons keep one face towards their planet. In the case of Pluto and Charon, they are tidally locked to each other each rotating every 6.4 Earth days, the period of their mutual orbit. The same is thought to be true for Eris and its moon, Dysnomia. If the Sun lasted long enough, Earth would eventually become tidally locked to the Moon as well. The importance of tidal locking for other stars. Tidal locking isn't just for moons. Although we usually can't observe it directly, basic physics suggests it should happen to close-in planets orbiting other stars. Mercury was once thought to be tidally locked, and some science fiction from the Golden Age imagined bases in the permanent cool of its dark side. For stars similar in mass to the Sun, tidal locking typically affects only inner planets too hot to support life. However, for cooler red dwarfs, their habitable zones are much closer to the star, making tidal locking the norm for any planet within them. What does this mean for the prospects of life in such worlds? Only a small portion of the planet might have temperatures suitable for life. In some cases, this would be the side facing the star, while everything else remains in permanent ice. In others, the dark side would be frozen, and the area where the star is directly overhead would be too hot. Only a twilight ring might have tolerable temperatures. Whether life could sustain itself there is still unknown. This is crucial because red dwarfs are the most common stars in the galaxy. Certainly many rocky planets with temperatures suitable for liquid water fall into these categories. If such worlds cannot support advanced life, it could help explain why we haven't encountered any yet. Please like and subscribe if you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching.